we're live. And we are filming as well. So we're all on board. Second episode of Swim Out of the Box. Brought to you by Swimbox. <laughs> You're so good at that. <laughs> Doesn't nice really like talent. match what we need for the podcast, but I like it. Okay, fair enough. You know, like we could always we will be editing an intro. Or, oh yeah. But, but I, I like the, the intro all the time. It's it comes from playing many years of D D where you have to say, Last time we seen our adventurers wandering into the dungeon. The cleric lost his arm. And the warrior's about to lose his leg. Hopefully they survive this adventure. Alright, so if we take that same format, last time and on Swim Out of the Box, we... Last time on Swim Out of the Box, we went over the last five important things you should know about body posture. What is this accent? <laughs> it's old Cockney, but butchered with American accents. Because it sounded like kind of old Cockney with Southern... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe a draw. <laughs> maybe, maybe like... Uh, it's, it's the way how the British see us. Cowboys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it sounded like a Western. By the way, Lissa is here off camera, so she's miming things to us. Right. Lissa just... <laughs> is Dominic's beautiful wife. That's right. Who will be assisting us and making sure that we have the right time points in our podcast and making visuals and making sure we stay on track too exactly <laughs> so oh today God. on swim out of the box today on swim out of the box <laughs> we will be talking about kicking and how it is vitally important to so, freestyle in the first episode we listed six not five but six sort of very important fundamental fundamentals fundamentals woof, fundamentals for every swimmer for every stroke Right? Correct, yes. And these are kind of, um, as a coach, they're like the pr guiding principles that you would use to coach anybody, right? So right, yeah. to reiterate, it was posture, um, kicking, which we're talking about today. Yep. Kicking, uh, rotation, recovery, breathing, and then propulsive phase. Propulsive. The propulsive phase. That's right. I am doing better at eliminating the word pull out of my vocabulary. I, I don't even know what this pool is. I don't understand I, that. I don't understand. So, the propulsive phase. Right. So, that's the six things that we will continue to talk about. But today, specifically, we're talking about kicking and more specifically about flutter kicking for freestyle. Correct. All right. We'll cover um, other styles later on. Yes, we will. Absolutely. Um, flutter kicking for freestyle, pretty much the same thing as it is for backstroke, but I would actually coach it slightly differently. Um some things to keep in mind when thinking about flutter kicking. It is a flutter movement. So that means for me, your legs are going to pass by each other. If they don't pass by each other, that's, in my opinion, considered a scissor kick. I have heard people interchangeably use those terms, but they are different things. Does that make sense to you? Yes. All right. So Go ahead. flutter kicking, your legs are passing each other. Yep. That's, you want to show the, the camera? That's yeah. a flutter kick. That's the flutter kick. <laughs> yep. All right. And a scissor kick looks like scissors where they stop in the middle. Right? Right. So you see people do scissor kicks typically when they believe they're not kicking because they will say things like, I'm a triathlete and I need to save my legs, so I'm not going to kick. But in reality, they still do end up kicking. They're just not aware of it. You're Very few using... people that I've ever met can absolutely keep their legs still and swim freestyle and still float. Right. Most people can't. I would say a good 99% of the humans on earth can't do that. Yeah. So not kicking is not an option in my opinion. Okay. Um, it's understanding that your kick is in freestyle is like your arms are to your running. We've, I know I've, I've shared that thought with you before. So I know that makes sense to you when I say it, but just to explain, when you run, you use your arms for momentum and for balance. Correct, yeah. Right? Well, same thing with your kick and swimming. Your legs need to play a role in your balance. If they are not playing a role in your balance, they're hurting you. They're typically going to drop and cause you to cause a lot of drag. So the kick in freestyle generates a vertical 
propulsive force. Mm-hmm. Right? Not so, so much a propulsive force driving you forward through the water, right. but more of a buoyancy force. All right, and we're going to get a little controversial today. Oh, controversial. I, I kind of, I always like to question the norms and the things that average coaches are coaching, where I know that not every cue or every approach is appropriate for everybody. Um, and that doesn't just mean based off of, of experience, that also means based off of limitations as well. So as I get more experienced swimmers, I will coach their kicking differently. Um, most notable, let's start for beginners, right? So we talked last time with body posture, right? Can you push off the wall mm-hmm. and float on the surface of the water in a streamlined position without losing your balance? That's a good way to start practicing your posture, yep. right? So the next step when you want to teach someone how to swim is to add a flutter kick. Right. And just like I mentioned uh, last podcast, the easiest entry way isn't to make it perfect. It's just to do it, Right. So as long as people are making sure that their entire leg is moving, it's not just their knees. Okay. Um, so kicking from the hip is kicking uh, from the hip is the most the common, common cue, most common cue ever. Right. Right. So making sure you're doing that, and then making sure that your feet are passing by each other. And the right. best way anyone can practice that is by actually kicking your big toes. Kicking your big toes. Yeah. Like, so are we your big like toes are like touching each other as oh, they pass got by. It, got it. Got it. Got it. All right. Um, some really uncommon things when people lose their balance, they mm-hmm. they spread their legs out, okay. like wide apart, so away from each the other. Width to, of your legs together. Is right. So I kind of I kind of think about like making sure your thighs are going to try to rub against each yeah. other as well. Everyone loves that feeling. Yeah, because we gotta <laughs> you gotta keep the the warm thighs. That's right. That's where so, I bake my chicken. What? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what you, just you, have, you never heard the 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 term where uh, people say, "Oh, it's I'm it's so hot in between my thighs right now. I could bake a chicken." No. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm just there for that one. So okay, now I learned something new today. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so um, making sure that you are keeping your legs as narrow as possible, making sure you're not kicking too deep, not kicking too high, right? So now we're getting a little bit more to the like intermediate concepts where for for beginner, I don't really care if you break the surface. I don't really care. Well, I mean, in our last episode, yep. you did want the feet to be quote unquote tap Happy. dancing yep. the top of the water. So right. if we're talking about that specifically and mm-hmm. the kicking, um, yep. should the heels be breaking the top of the water or should they be? I think for water? a beginner, it would be okay if just the bottom of the foot kind of presses up against the surface and breaks the surface a little bit, that's fine. Okay. Um, the most important thing about kicking isn't if it's from your full leg, isn't if it's from your knee. It is about your ankles. Yes. And it's kind of ridiculous how important that is. Well, they're like flippers. Like, if you were to have fins on, mm-hmm. it's the kind of same motion but you're supposed to be doing with your feet. Right. So Lissa and I made a video and it's on our YouTube trying to compare and contrast like the different uh, bad movements with mm-hmm. kicking. So over bending in your knees and more specifically moving your knee sort of forward towards your chin and down, right? That would be bad or not having very flexible ankles. So if someone's, foot is in a dorsiflex mm-hmm. right toes was... pointing down right so your ankle would be at a right angle actually hold up let me think about that dorsal plantar flexion yeah dorsal which one is it did i get it wrong yeah i think you did plantar flexion F- flexion should be extended right right but the dorsal of your foot is the top of your foot and the plantar of your foot is the bottom, bottom. of your foot so plantar yeah. flexion your toes are going up dorsal flexion your toes are going down okay so you did get it right oh thank god <laughs> <laughs> so if your ankle is at a right angle because you're you've been a runner your entire life and you don't have very good ankle flexibility it doesn't matter how much you kick from your hip it's not going to help so in that video, when, when I was filming with Lissa, it was amazing. She's a fantastic kicker. Mm-hmm. And as soon as she kept her 
ankles sort of fixed in that right angle position, she moved backwards. It's unbelievable. So even though her kick was good from the, her hip to her knee, that was all good. But if the ankles aren't in the right place, you move backwards. Got it. Okay. Even So if your ankles are flexible and you overuse your knees, you'll still move forward. Okay. Fair so enough. So the, the like, margin of error is less if you have flexible ankles. Okay. But if we're talking about the average triathlete or the mm-hmm. average human who hasn't gone through a bunch of uh, ankle flexibility exercises – Usually, triathletes have very stiff ankles. So, yes. Now, fins can help. Okay. So, wearing fins, and I actually, if you want to gain some flexibility in your ankles, you need to wear a longer fin. So, it's a longer lever. Okay. That forces lever. that lever, lever, lever. tomato, <laughs> tomato. Who says tomato? I actually know somebody, but anyway. <laughs> um, so, that will kind of force that ankle flexibility. Okay. It might help eventually over time. Um, there's plenty of things you can do on dry land to help. So making sure, what are some dry land exercises that you would recommend? Because I know what I would recommend. Increasing ankle strength or increasing ankle, ankle flexibility. flexibility? Hmm. That's a very complex question in and of itself because the ankle is has a lot of bony and tendon. Uh, it's a very bony and tendonous. Like the muscles around it, you know, run up to the calf or down right. into the foot. So it's very difficult to. If I was to say, work on flexibility, you're going to be stretching your calves. You're going to be doing like, a calf wall stretch where you put your the, ball of your foot, up against the wall and you're kind of leaning your. Mm-hmm your uh, body into it so you're stretching the calf so like your big toe and your toes are up against right the yeah, yeah 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 and and then doing something like uh where you tilt your foot to inverted or yeah inverted uh, uh in and out when you're doing rotation to like get yourself can't even show it on camera but it's yeah right it's to increase (laughs) it kind of increase and get everything moving in there yeah what about um because this kind of just occurred to me what about arch strength so if someone has a flat foot how would it go i wonder if it it is preventing them from gaining some additional ankle flexibility i don't know i don't know that either but to increase arch support um put a towel on the ground and then use your only your toes. Yeah, put your toes scrunch, on it and scrunch, scrunch it up. Scrunch it so up. hard. Yeah. It is it's it's incredibly so hard. hard. And um, ooh, I just I just remembered a great ankle thing. Um, writing the alphabet with your big toe. It's hard. Oh, I know. That's yeah. a good one. That's a good runner's cue as well. Yeah. Like, you should do that before you run. Mm. Just pick your foot up off the ground and try to make trace the alphabet basically. Yeah. With both your ankles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also this is worth mentioning. Since I brought up the arch of the foot, I think a really common cue that is not helpful, that's overused, is pointing your toes. All right, it's not about pointing your toes because that is the arch of your foot. I mean, if you were, I mean, I know when I was swimming, actually yesterday, I was trying to get more out of my kick because I was doing a kick, uh, kick set, and when I tried to point my toes, I immediately started my feet, uh, started feeling my feet cramp up, and I'm yep. like, nope, nope, that's bad. Let's not do that. Right, and so that's why that's a problem because it's not really putting you in the, the sort of paddle position that you want your feet to be in. It's actually curling your feet up, mm-hmm. causing that cramp, and in, in a way, it can make your foot shorter because it's curling your foot versus mm-hmm. extending your foot. So. Don't point your toes, extend your ankles, and whatever you got is whatever you got. Mm-hmm. You know, do the best with what you have, try to work on it, like I said, with fins or on land, um, and it might be stretching your calf out the way that you just described it, or sitting on your ankles, that's a really big one. Um, if you sit at a desk, you can wrap, if you don't have a wheelie chair, and you can just get a regular four legs chair, you can wrap your ankles around the front legs and kind of press your, toes into the ground a little bit so the top mm-hmm. of your foot is being pressed on the ground i'm doing it right now as i talk to you and man my ankle flexibility is just getting increased as you talk i'm gonna have great ankle, ankle flexibility by the end of this podcast yeah. so um you got to kind of find ways to do it i think 
outside of going to the gym or something. Yeah, I mean, and this is one of those things I've always been interested in, is finding ways when you're just, you know, living to either increase your posture, right? you know, making yourself a little bit healthier, doing a couple stretches, or doing, um, what is that type of muscle? Yeah, isometric, uh, isometric contractions where you're just sitting there pushing against something like this right where you're not going anywhere but you're still stimulating the right. muscles to turn on right so yeah, you gotta find those little teeth yeah you know life so hacks cool. brought to you by swim out of the box <laughs> and swim box <laughs> and swim box so yeah. very very weird name <laughs> i like it though um so without ankle flexibility you can't be expected to do very well kicking and i think it's also worth mentioning the goal when doing a kick set might be to isolate your kick but you will only gain so much from isolating your kick right you have to build in portions of your training that allow you to work your kick into your actual swimming oh yeah yeah right so it's not isolated anymore and you have to learn how to coordinate with the rotation and the balance and your arms recovering and pulling oh yeah or during the propulsive phase oh, i i um, kind of treat the kick set as a way to like get my legs started like you know like a piston like or I um, can't remember the exact thing, but I need to, I use a kick set to get my legs going. So when I start doing like my longer freestyle strokes or freestyle distances, I, I get in there and my kick's actually consistent right. as I'm still going instead of it just being very right. weak and not really contributing anything to my long distance swimming. Right, so. and my preference is always for people to either kick on their sides um, so they can just turn their head and get a breath and plus it helps them kind of learn some balance. Mm -hmm. um, or to kick streamline on your stomach. Yeah, and that's you, what I do. And when you want a breath, you just take one freestyle stroke, take your breath, just don't stop kicking in order to get that. Oh, yeah. So then with that alone, you already have started the process of, of building in your kick to your swimming. Because okay, now you're incorporating enough. it with rotation and with a pull and with a breath. So, it's so what about using a snorkel and kicking in a streamlined position? I think that's perfectly acceptable. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... Avoid using kickboards, basically. Yeah, basically. They, they're giving you a, a false, false sense, sense of, of buoyancy. Of buoyancy. Yeah, they're they're changing your body posture, and so they're changing the position of your legs as well and how they would function. Mm -hmm. So just try to stay streamlined. If you don't have a snorkel, just do what I had just mentioned, or get a snorkel and practice that. But like I said, that's only going to get you so far. They will help you improve your kick up to a certain point, but it won't help you improve your kick while you actually swim. Oh, right, right, right. All right, so... Build up that leg strength. Right. And I don't know of any kicking competitions, personally. Wow. So... Tread water. Right? <laughs> no, one, no one's like, oh, I'm going to swim open water with just my kick. Right? So if you're not a great kicker, that's okay. It's kicking's support. It is not, mm -hmm. you know, the main focus. And um, your kick is probably responsible for around 20% of your forward propulsion. And it could be even less. Yeah, I would say it's twenty percent, right? Less. So distance, I mean, it's probably even like ten percent. Right. Yeah. So it's not that big of a deal if you aren't aren't good at isolated kick. Right. Yeah. Which people complain, oh, I'm not a good kicker. Who cares? Doesn't matter. It does. It does help with the breath, though. I know that. Well, it just helps with balance and support in right. general. Yeah. So. Because, you know, when I don't kick, oof, I always start pulling too. Or, oh. I start already start my propuls my propulsion phase too early when I'm not kicking. Okay. I always like go for my breath. Oh, the, my arm starts pulling just to keep my head above water. But if I'm kicking, I can so finish my stroke. I try to think of the flutter kick more like a whip than an up and down motion, right? So if you can picture Indiana so Jones whips <laughs> on you your hips. Um, if you can picture somebody swimming and you're looking at the side of them, if their leg picks up, right, so that's their up kick, so mm -hmm. flutter kick has two directions, it's an up kick, so their leg is picking up, and as their leg picks up, their knee is gently bending, mm -hmm. and as their foot goes down, it's unraveling, sort of like it's pushing back against the water and stopping at the midline of the body. This is an advanced, more like intermediate advanced idea of kicking because if you just pick your leg up and down only from your hip your your leg actually goes lower than it should and it causes drag mm -hmm. but it, you have to kind of learn to coordinate that first and then you can learn to refine it 
to stop a little bit better. So in this example, where are the toes touching? So right at that end point. Okay. So it's like touch, extend, up, touch, extend, up. Got touch, it, okay. Up. So, so it's like the chick from uh, what's it? Uh, Kingsman with the uh, knife blade legs. I don't, I've never seen Kingsman. Oh, come on, Dominic. I <laughs> wanted to. <laughs> just haven't gotten around to it. I don't Sorry. Right. to watch. <laughs> I'm too busy doing this. Right, right. <laughs> don't worry, I'm here for your pop culture references. Thank you, I appreciate that, Steve Rogers. Um, <laughs> so, so, if the goal is to think of it as a whip, that ankle becomes incredibly important to kind of whip. And if you watch someone do this motion, and you watch it in slow motion, you'll see that they're ankle actually goes close to that 90 degree position, but it's going to snap right back up. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that your ankle shouldn't always be completely extended all the time. We don't want that rigidity, we don't want that rigidity there. Just like we talked about last podcast. Mm -hmm. swimming's Happy always, medium. Yeah, swimming's always about like the in-between, right? So it's, it's making sure that you have the flexibility that you can whip down and then have the ability to, to kind of snap it up back up again. Okay. Um, so that whipping motion is incredibly important. If you can picture a bullwhip cracking in slow motion, it really helps to understand how bullwhips work. They don't move down, they move to a straight well, line. It, I would also say it's very similar to um, setting up a serve in tennis. I don't know anything about that, but I'll believe you. It's the same motion where you're trying to generate the force from your arm and then whip it all the way through the tennis racket. Okay, so like throwing a pitch. Well, right. Also, it's not from the shoulder. The force is generated from ground all the way up to the arm. But right. For this purpose. For this for for <laughs> demonstration purposes, we're talking about the whipping motion only at the arm. Right. <laughs> um, so some really common cues that people like to use. It's like they're trying to whip a flip flop off of their toe. Oh, that's a good one. I love okay. that one. Because well, a I'm lazy and when I have flip flops on I want to see if I can like flick it <laughs> see how far I can get it across the room like so that. I have to walk and put it away um, kicking a soccer ball is a pretty good one but I find with that yeah. you yeah. might end up bending your knee too much yeah. or kicking too deep but it's alright um, I always try to get people to focus on their up kick okay. everyone wants to press down and that's such an obvious way to generate propulsion and mm -hmm. your down kick will always be strong uh, because we're just built to move that way. Uh, so the up kick is always sort of missed. So it's really important to practice and focus on actually lifting your hamstrings up towards the surface of the water, m even allowing your foot to break the surface a little bit. Okay. And so this is the controversial part. You ready? It's gonna get okay. really controversial. Here we go. Arcane this move. Because arcane. somebody's, this is for an advanced swimmer, by the way. Because your up kick is so weak, it is okay if you lift your foot up out of the water, because you're not going to gain any more resistance from it, you're not going to gain a lot of propulsion from it, right? So I'm not gaining drag. My drag coefficient isn't going up. My foot is in the air. As long as my foot is up, I should be fine. And then it allows you to generate that more powerful press down, but having your legs stop at that midline instead of if your foot is below the surface and you press down, your foot automatically will stop deeper causing drag okay i would say that is uh pretty controversial actually it is it really is i have found it to be very helpful not in just my swimming but in my client swimming okay um, but they have to have a good understanding of how to kick from the hips first they have to have a good understanding of how to whip their ankle a little bit and then you can start to build this in uh, the way that I built the practice in is letting people kick with a full buoy in between their thighs. Okay. All right. So they're they're still kicking from their hip a little bit, but it's helping people keep their legs close together. It's helping people not press down too far as well. Now, how, how big are these pool, pool buoys? Are we talking like pretty small ones? Or are we freaking like I, I prefer people to use a junior size pool buoy, so okay. it gives them less buoyancy. Mm -hmm. um, there's a I don't, I've never seen it sold, but I have seen a pool buoy, and I don't remember who made it, but I think it was a tri-coach, 
that is hard plastic and it looks like two bottles of water that have been oh oh, oh I know um, sealed I'll, together oh. and you can What's fill it name? up with water so the more water you put in it the heavier it gets the less buoyancy it gives you so you have to kind of like it's kind of cool you can progressively make it harder and harder I actually was listening to a podcast about her and her talking on a podcast recently like oh, literally like today? Tuesday and you can't remember her name um that's the funny thing I actually saw a thing on YouTube when she was actually using an endless pool to teach her client <laughs> and I was like whoa that's interesting need to need to figure out her name I can't remember it right off let's see is it Carlin Pipes no she works out of Colorado. Colorado. Mm. Off the top of my head, and not Colorado. She was on an Australian Colorado. podcast about swimming. I can't remember what it was called, but okay. we can cut that information in later. <laughs> yes, we can. Yes, we can. Um, we'll do that and probably stop. Yes. Yeah. So I like the idea of using the, the, the pool buoy because it is an opportunity to incorporate the movement into the actual swimming. Okay. Um, another really great way to improve your kick is vertical kicking, right? So treading water. Not really. Treading water is with your arms and pressing down. Okay. Treading water with your hands stuck underneath your So armpits. you can do vertical kicking in probably four different ways, right? Okay. So you can have your hands by your side. You can have your hands across your chest. Mm -hmm. You can have your hands just out of the water, so your wrists are on the surface. And then you can progress from there and go to hands way out, so maybe your elbows, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can do it into a streamlined position as well. Um, so obviously the higher your hands get up, the harder it gets to kick and still breathe. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to, when you do vertical kicking, start with your hands by your side, so you can just focus on the technique of it. Uh, if you're vertical kicking and you're moving in the water, so if you're moving back or forward, that means you're not in a straight line. That means either your posture is wrong, and you need to fix your posture, or your kick is moving you somewhere that it shouldn't be. So try to stay in the same exact place when you do vertical kicking. Um, and if you don't know what vertical kicking is, I'll put a little clip in right now. <laughs> so you should be seeing the clip of vertical kicking make sure it's okay at least the first couple of times you do it that you have a full big kick right mm -hmm. i think of it um, as like a nordic track you might be too young do you remember what nordic tracks are so if you don't know what a nordic track is there's an image on the screen right now that's showing you a nordic track okay <laughs> right. I'm, I'm just kind of picturing uh, an elliptical kind of yeah kind of um right so then you can kind of start reducing down i i always compare learning new skills to babies, right? Oh, like the clapping of a baby. Like babies clap their hands really big and really obviously. And then all of a sudden when you're an adult, you clap like you're like turtle claps. Yes, like you're Clapper on the green and you're watching turtles. golf, right? So start big and then you can teach yourself to reduce down as your body, A, gets coordinated and B, gains some strength, right? Mm -hmm. Coordination has something to do with strength as well. Yeah, so it's the neural connection. Yeah, you have to build that, that, that movement pattern. Yeah. So it's okay to be big. It's not always going to be perfect, right? Um, let's see here. What else is there to talk about kicking? Some other well, things. Well, let's start yes. wrapping up this okay. to five points, because okay. this is going to be our thing, five points of what you should be thinking about while you're kicking. So I would like people to think about lifting their legs up towards the surface. Okay. Lift so your legs. To emphasize the up kick. And Emphasizing the up kick. So then point number two is the contrast to this is de-emphasize the down kick. It will happen. It will happen automatically. If you move one leg back or up, the other goes down. That's how we walk. All right? So it's not like you have to focus on pressing down more likely people have to focus on pressing up. Number three mm -hmm. would be try to feel where the glute meets the hamstring. That's where the work comes from. So to lift your leg up, it's a little bit of glute and a little bit of hamstring. Got it? Yep. Number four, extend your ankles. Extend the ankles. Number five, width. 
Keep your legs close together. Keep your legs close together. Friction between the thighs. Right. Um, so ways to kind of incorporate this into your swimming, what we like to do at Swimbox, like I said, the pull buoy is more of a intermediate, advanced idea mm -hmm. for beginners going moving towards more of an intermediate swimmer. We use um, just ankle bands that you can buy on Amazon mm -hmm. to force people to feel their kick uh, constantly moving. So you kind of want to bounce your ankles off the inside of the band. Mm -hmm. And also, if you put too much of an emphasis on that down kick, that band keeps pushing down and your legs will sink because you won't be able to recover uh, on that up kick. It's just, it's not enough of a movement there to recover your deep kick. So it helps people kind of find their like shallow but effective kick. Um, and then we also use ankle weights so that it helps build that strength on the up kick and you can use that on the wall first and then streamline on your stomach and then you can use it while you swim as well. Right? So you can use all the, the ankle bands the same exact way. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend that. Right? You have to isolate it and make it an easy entry and then once you get good at doing it on the wall then you can try it off of the wall and then once you get good at doing it streamline on your stomach then you could add your arms to it and see if you can still maintain it. So in that order, on the wall, off the wall, without your arms, off the wall, with your arms, doing a freestyle stroke. Yeah, you got it. Progression. Yes, progression is key here. Um, and then, like I said before, fins, right? Then you can start adding fins on. Mm -hmm. The reason why we like weights before fins is fins give you the added benefit of momentum. Are you being attacked by Evie? Yes, I'm being attacked by <laughs> the French. By the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, mm -hmm. you saw the curtains move because Evie, our French bulldog, is trying to get Evan's attention, and she's being very cute right now. She really wants Evan's attention. So, anyway. Um, we like the, the ankle weights more than... Please don't lick my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, can you call her, please? Evie. <laughs> so, she's Evie. very, very needy. She needs yeah. your attention so badly. You're spoiling her. Yes, she gets spoiled. Don't worry. Um, but we use the ankle weights instead of the fins first because though fins give you the resistance that help build strength, they mm -hmm. also give you the added benefit of momentum and speed and that's very easy to kind of just focus on that. It's like a distraction from what you're actually trying to work on. So we like the ankle weights first. Use the fins to help stretch your ankles out. Mm -hmm. I'm always okay with people using fins just in that same progression you just listed. On the wall first, isolated uh, in a streamlined kick on your stomach or on your side. Not streamlined on your side. Don't streamline on your side. That's silly. Kick with one side down, one arm down, one arm out. Um, and then swim with your fins as well. And as you kind of get more ankle flexibility, you can get shorter and shorter fins and incorporating that into your swimming. All right. All right, so that is flutter kicking. I'm trying to think if there's anything else we need to add to flutter kicking before we wrap up. You got anything? Do you feel informed? Mm. I do feel pretty informed. Okay. I know I'm gonna be trying some of these things when I go to the pool next. Good. It's, it's definitely on my list of things. Okay. So actually, here's a good question. How do you practice vertical kicking in a very shallow pool? <laughs> you go to another pool. <laughs> <laughs> there is no way to effectively practice vertical kicking unless you can be in water that your feet don't touch the bottom. Fair enough. And that has been the second episode of Swim Out of Box, hosted by Dominic and Evan from Swimbox. We look forward to talking to you guys next week on the third topic, which is going to be... Rotation. Rotation. <laughs> so, catch you guys next week. All right.